Okay, Le Chatelier's principle. Now the IB specifically says you don't need to know it, but if you know it, it makes answering the questions a lot easier. So when a system in equilibrium is stressed, it moves to oppose the stress. Thank you, Mr. Le Chatelier. So we need to discuss what we mean by stress. So here's a, a sample equilibrium, concentration, pressure, temperature, and the addition of a catalyst. Well, actually that's the next uh, assessment statement. Those are what we call stresses on an equilibrium. So let's take them one by one. So this is weird if you've never seen this before. If I increase the concentration of the red A, it turns blue. Well, that's strange. I add red A, it goes bluer. If I remove the colorless B, it turns redder. Oh. And if I add the blue C, it turns redder. That seems to make no sense at all. You add red stuff, it turns blue. And this is the genius of Le Chatelier, because he worked this out. So let's look at an example of why adding A, well, let me just fix that equilibrium, lovely. If I add A, the forward reaction is gonna be faster than the reverse reaction because there's a higher concentration of the reactants. And so this increased forward reaction is going to make more C while eating up the A that I added, a lot of the A that I've added. So it's going to end up being bluer. And that's counterintuitive. You add red stuff and it turns blue. Eventually, the forward and reverse reaction rates will again be the same and equilibrium is restored at this new position that's bluer. Let's look at the effect of pressure. So for pressure, you've got to look for gas in the equilibrium. And that's going to tip you off on how to, uh, to deal with it. Now, if the pressure goes up, the equilibrium is going to try to remove some gas. And that's going to reduce the pressure or the stress on the equilibrium. You increase the pressure, the equilibrium tries to remove some pressure. It's going to shift to the left and it's going to be redder because it's going to remove gas that way. Temperature, if you heat it up, it tries to cool itself down. If you cool it down, it tries to heat itself up. So if I increase temperature, it's gonna favor the endothermic, the cold producing side, if you will. So if I heat it up, which side is endothermic? Well, I like to put in my mind plus hot and plus cold on each side of the equilibrium. That helps me understand it better. But maybe you just wanna uh, have delta H as minus 10 as it is and put delta H plus 10 on the other side for the reverse reaction. So again, if you increase the temperature, it's gonna turn redder. This is the contact process, you need to know this uh, for other assessment statements. If I remove some oxygen from the equilibrium, I'm gonna favor the reactants. Equilibrium's gonna to shift to the left, that's the correct terminology, to relieve the stress. And if I reduce the temperature, the equilibrium is going to shift to the exothermic side, which in this case, our delta H is negative, it's going to go to the right-hand side. But pressure, that's a bit tricky. Now remember we said look for gases. There are gases everywhere. So how do we rationalize this? Well, if I increase the pressure, the equilibrium is going to shift to the side with the least, least gas particles. If you don't say gas, you won't get the point. So that's going to reduce the pressure or stress. I increase the pressure, the equilibrium reduces the pressure. That's his principle. The IB loved this little tricky one. Ooh, two gas particles on each side. Ah, pressure has no effect. The change in pressure has no effect on this equilibrium because there's equal number of gas particles on each side. Now, several people have said they like my evil questions. I'd say no more than one in 10 students would probably get this right without assistance. Why not pause and have a little think? Welcome back. So what do you think? Let's go through it piece by piece. So an increase in pressure, well, that's gonna favor the side with the least gas particles. So two reactants, one product, it's gonna favor the products. It's gonna to shift to the light yellow side. All right. Now temperature seems like a problem. Delta H is missing. 
Is that a mistake? No, you can work out delta H because the forward reaction is bond making and bond making releases energy. Delta H is negative. So if I increase the temperature, it's going to favor the endothermic to cool itself down, which is the reverse reaction. I'm making NO2, the dark brown stuff. Ah, so which is the most dominant effect? It's temperature because it went dark brown. The pressure is a minor effect here. And finally, the only thing that changes Kc, the equilibrium constant, is temperature. That's the only thing that changes it. And no one seems to be able to remember it, so it's quite frustrating to teach this. Here's the Harbour process. I'll write out Kc for you. The coefficients become the exponents. And here's some questions. So what is the effect on Kc if I double the nitrogen concentration? If I reduce ammonia? And the third question, if the catalyst is more finely divided? Well, looking at Kc, if I double N2, Kc is going to be halved. Rem remove ammonia, Kc is going down, and Kc is going to be faster. With the No, 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 this is all wrong. The only thing that changes Kc is temperature. But year after year, people get this wrong. None of those things change Kc at all. It's just temperature. Okay, so here's a question that isn't a trick. What's the effect on Kc if the temperature goes down? Well, it's going to favour the exo. I'm cooling it down. It wants to heat itself up. The products are exothermic. Ah, so Kc is going to increase in that case. We're going to make more ammonia in the equilibrium mixture.